Hello, welcome to midweek chat, or weekly chat, as I'll call it. Um, hello to Ian, James, all the other people who do this every week, or the people who do it every now and again, like me. Um, I really want to keep doing this every week, so I'll try and do that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make this one a bit of a quick one, but uh, three, three topics again this week, which I believe came from James. Um, what was the first one? <laughs> the first one was uh, how much uh, would you, how much is too much for, for buying a Blu-ray or a DVD or a film in general? Um, and I think Ian was talking about how much did you pay to go to the cinema as well, something like that. I don't know. This is a shamble. So I'm down in the basement doing this at one o'clock in the morning, waiting for another video to render so I can go to sleep. Um, cinema, you know, it's just getting more and more expensive all the time. Here in Norway it's like at least 10, 11 quid uh, if you convert the currency to go see a film which is terrible. Um, but you know it just is what it is and I love going to the cinema so I'm just gonna keep paying that kind of money I guess. Um, but we did go to um, when we were in New York, in Rochester more specifically. Um, well no, in New York City we went to see um, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Um, and Divergent. And I think they were like sixteen, seventeen dollars, something like that a pop. Uh the Divergent one was about sixteen, seventeen dollars and it was like your bog standard cinema, like anywhere. But the uh Captain America Winter Soldier, which was around the same price, it was like a luxury theatre. We it had like these massive leather reclining seats with automatic reclining. You didn't have to even use your body to recline it, just press a button, it was like ee. it was like, everyone was like horizontal in the theatre, it was ridiculous um, but, and then went to Rochester a lot further north than the actual New York City stayed with Robbie Webster and went to a, a small kind of cinema there a small theatre and that was like I think about five dollars or something which is crazy cheap to see the Grand Budapest Hotel so it depends where you go I guess but here in Norway it's just expensive as a mother um, and yeah I'm not entirely sure that was even part of the three topics but <laughs> paying for a movie how much would you pay um, it depends you I always would like to shop around find the best price with catalogue titles you know, never really want to pay more than the ten. It depends on the film, depends on the special features, the packaging. If it's just like a bog standard Amore, I really don't want to pay more than like five, six pounds for it. If it's got a slip cover, maybe a couple more pounds. If it's got loads of like good extras on it, maybe a bit more. And if it's got like a nice slip box or something like that, then again, you you add a few more on there, or I do, you know. Uh, then you got like Arrow Video, you know, if they release a film I really want, then I know it's worth the extra money. Same with Masters of Cinema, but again, I still try and find the best prices with those as well, so it depends really. DVDs, these days I would not pay more than a couple of quid for, honestly. I've become such a, a Blu-ray snob, it's like, you know, I, I just see dirt DVDs as dirt these days. <laughs> it's only a few things I never allow myself to buy DVDs for, either stuff out of necessity or like the early seasons of The Simpsons which I'm currently watching and really enjoying to, to be fair but um, some of those uh, encodes on those old Simpsons DVDs are a bit ropey I'd love to see them on Blu-ray even though it's standard definition just I think they could clean it up a bit more for um, for HD even though it's standard definition anyway blah 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 um, and then how much would you pay for a film just generally again I'm, I'm just like making this up as I go along but <laughs> um, a super duper collector's edition again depending on what was in it if it was worth it then I'd go the extra mile with the money, but it just depends really on a Blu-ray to Blu-ray basis. Second topic um, was your thoughts on animation in general, I guess. I'm a big fan of animated movies. Um, grew up with Disney, of course, like most of us, I think. Um, Pixar, I'm a huge fan of. Um, the classic Disney is a fantastic. I'm a big fan of hand-drawn animation. Um, Ian was saying how like he thinks some of the DreamWorks films are hit and miss kind of agree with them there, but there are some really good ones like How to Train Your Dragon, the first Shrek, I think. Um, and I've seen some good like other ones like um, Cloud of the Chance of Meatballs, the first and second one are really good. The Crudes from last year was actually fantastic, I have to, I have to say it really surprised me that one. Um, Despicable Me, they're good ones. Um, but Pixar's really the gold standard, I think. And now Disney is coming into their own with the uh, 
the digital animation stuff with Frozen, which has become pretty much the biggest thing ever. I mean, it's I think it is now the, the highest grossing animated film. Um, at least it's going to be the most lucrative. I mean, we're talking like Lion King status here. They, they are cleaning the house with Frozen, just all the... I mean, I heard they're coming out with like like six or seven sequel novels, not novels, but like books for kids and, you know, Frozen on Ice, stage shows, I mean, they are absolutely just raking it in with Frozen. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, newer stuff, I love the digital animation if it's done well, and I love Pixar and Disney. Um, yeah, that's it really, but I, I, when was it, um, I think it was Wreck-It Ralph, I might be wrong, that had the, um, the short before it, uh, Paper Man, which was like kind of a throwback to the kind of hand-drawn Disney glory days, and I thought that was amazing. I love hand-drawn animation. I'm always going to slightly prefer it, I think, but uh, and especially Studio Ghibli as well. My favorite animated film is uh, Poco Rosso, and my favorite, you know, I kind of put them in two categories. I'd say Poco Rosso is my favorite traditionally animated movie, and uh, Wall-E is my favorite kind of digitally animated movie. That's just a masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, big fan of animation. And then the third one was... Um, what was the third one? Let me think. <laughs> Completely forgotten. The third topic. And I was just watching Ian and James's videos on. Hmm. <laughs> what was the third topic? I should have noted it down, at least. It's an absolute shambles. Let me just think. Let me get in some of brain. And try and do this without having to go back upstairs. Um, mm. <laughs> Who is he talking about? Animation. Uh, there we go. I got it. <laughs> I'll just leave this in. What the hell? Screw it. Um, who do you take your recommendations from when it comes to movies? Mainly friends in the community. Um, there's not really anyone else. I mean, my dad recommended me a few films. Like whenever was the last time I spoke to him, months ago actually. Um, and I noted them down. And I trust my dad's opinion. Well, my dad, he likes great movies, but he also likes like shit movies at the same time. Um, similar to Ian, I guess. Um, he was saying about his parents liking Steven Seagal films, but no, my dad, my dad likes a lot of real classic films, and so I trust his opinion. My mum, my mum always has good recommendations. When she says a film's really good, it's really good. Films like Rope, you know, Magnificent Seven, uh, My Fair Lady, you know, a couple of recent examples of films I've watched with her in the past few years that have turned out to be great. Um, but yeah, mainly friends in the community or people who I see make videos, you know. I'll also go to like Blu-ray.com and read the reviews and, and kind of, I don't know. It depends really. And also, you know, just general YouTube videos. Um, but to be honest, most of the time I kind of seek them out myself and kind of watch a film and I like it. So I look up the director or I look up an actor. And I just get lost in the rabbit hole of Wikipedia and IMDB and I just kind of make my own lists and stuff like that. But yeah, generally from all sorts of places, no real particular source, just uh, anyone and everyone. Um, yeah, so that's my weekly chat. Um, if you want to get involved, just make a video and uh, let us all know on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you with the next weekly chat. Hopefully I'll, I'll just keep doing this and... Uh, and keep getting involved. I'd like to do the um, the top ten Tuesdays, but um, I think I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I'd like to. It's just trying to fit fit it in, I guess, to fit fit the time in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was my weekly chat. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with the next video. He says he's really cool, but I think he's a tool. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm sure he's a. Uh... Quite nice guy, really. <laughs> He's a quite nice guy, really.